Hello everybody, and welcome to the first episode of Dinners with Dad. A couple disclaimers before we get started. First, this is our very first episode, and the first thing I want to let you know is that this vlog, or whatever you want to call it, was not my idea. <laughs> This, my family is insisting on me doing it, but since we're in quarantine for coronavirus and we have nothing better to do, why not? Second thing you need to know is that I don't know anything about cooking. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trained as a cook. I just started cooking a few months ago. So um, I have not been trained as a cook, unless you count hours and hours and hours of watching the Food Network, then I have been trained by the best. Uh, but other than that, I'm just doing it my way. So don't judge me. The third thing is that we in our family eat low carb. We try to. We're not tyrants about it, but the dinners that I make are typically low carb recipes. This is not a weight loss vlog. This is just about cooking dinner. It's all it's about, but the recipes are low carb. So, and most of the recipes are not my recipes. They're just recipes that I steal online. So again, I'm not sure why anybody would watch this. The recipes that we use will be in the description below. Yes. We'll try to give the recipes in the description below if, if you're interested. That's to Callie, by the way. She is videotaping my daughter, Callie. Hello. This was really all her idea, so you can blame her. So for our first Dinners with Dad episode, tonight we are making actually one of my more complicated recipes. Usually my recipes are pretty fast and easy, but tonight is a little labor intensive. We are making my famous spaghetti squash lasagna. The first thing we gotta do is cut our spaghetti squash. Um, and so this, this is my least favorite part of the whole thing. Um, it's cutting the spaghetti squash. Now don't judge me because my knife techniques are not good. And we don't have very good knives. And yeah, we don't have great knives either. Um, so the first thing you have to do in making spaghetti squash is cut the thing in half. <laughs> and try not to cut your hand off in the process. This one's not too bad. I have two knives here I might switch out in a minute. Isn't this fun? Ah! Okay, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Now this is the tricky part when they don't line up, you know, but you just make it happen. And you go around your squash. Oh, here we go. Look at that, oh, look at that. Look at that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other one too. You wanna to preheat your oven to 450 degrees before you cook your spaghetti squash. Now, you have to de-seed the spaghetti squash. I'm just gonna put them in here. To get all these, oops. <laughs> They're kinda of like, it's kinda of like a pumpkin, but easier. Um, this recipe, normally I find most of my recipes online um, and Facebook pages for low carb or keto recipes. And usually I just follow them word for word because while I don't know how to cook, I can read and follow directions. But this one is not really a recipe that's out there. I just, I used a um, Food Network video to show me how to cook the spaghetti squash. And then another recipe using zucchini, which I'm not a fan of zucchini, on how to do the ricotta filling. And then my um, sauce, I just make on my own. I just made it up. And so then I combine all for this, this recipe. So I am going to continue scraping out these seeds. Okay, once you have the squash, all the seeds all scraped out, then you season it 
You put a little bit of olive oil on each one, and if you have a brush, that would be the great way. I don't have a brush, so I'm gonna use a spoon here to kind of spread it around. Um, I wish I did have a brush. I think we did have one at one time, but I don't know what happened to it. And then you season them liberally. I am a liberal seasoner. Sometimes that gets me in trouble. Okay, then you take your squash and you put them, um, I guess, face down on, the, on your pans. These are lovely pans, aren't they? Like this. Oh no. I just spilled olive oil everywhere. <sighs> you should always put the lid back on your olive oil. Oh, gross. Okay, put your, your squash face down on your pans like this. What a mess. And then you put them in the oven at 450 degrees for 40 minutes, 40 minutes. Set a timer. And that's your first step. So after I clean up this olive oil while they're cooking, I'll get started on the other two parts, the ricotta mixture and then the marinara sauce. Be back in a minute. So the spaghetti squash, they're cooking in the oven. Can you hear the sizzle? So this, this um, spaghetti squash lasagna has four layers. It has spaghetti squash, which is going to be on the bottom, which we'll, we'll put together later. But the layer above the spaghetti squash is this ricotta cheese mixture. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to add it up. We're going to mix it all up and then set it aside. So we have this, wow, this like 30 ounce thing of ricotta cheese. It has not been open yet, so oh, I hate these. Oh, it's dripping. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, you don't want to do that. Okay, I'll get a knife to help me here. These are things you do should do before turning the camera on, but hey, this is just how it is. I'm just a regular person making dinner. Okay, that's gonna have to switch back. <laughs> So I'm going to use about half of this, so about 15 or 16 ounces of cottage cheese. This is the, just the cheap, you know, generic kind. If you want to pay a lot of money for the expensive kind, go for it. And again, I'm not measuring, I'm just, you know, eyeballing this. That's about half. There we go. And then I'm going to add in, let's see, and I keep my recipes on my phone. And then I set my phone not to turn off because it drives me nuts when my phone turns off every 30 seconds and I have to put my thumb on there. So I turn, turn it off so it doesn't turn off. Um, and that takes a lot of battery, but oh well. Um, I gotta put in two eggs. The egg shell in there. My scrap pile. I learned this from Rachel Ray on the Food Network. 30 minute meals, she always has a scrap pile. Full cup of Parmesan cheese. Now I prefer Parm, the kind of the fresh. Look at that! I have exactly a cup left. <laughs> um, the freshly grated, but for this, you want the powdery kind. And then you just mix it up. Oh, and I put a little bit of Italian seasoning in this. Let me get that. So I put a little bit of Italian seasoning. Again, I don't measure. I just you know. Put some in there. Use more, use less. Good, so that looks great. So this is the second um, layer in our lasagna. We're gonna put this aside for now, and then while the squash, we still have another half an hour, we're gonna get to work 
on the um, meat sauce. Here we go. Okay. Oh, the cuckoo clock. It doesn't keep the right time, so don't worry about that. It's time to start making our meat sauce. So the first thing we have to do is chop, and this is my least favorite thing of cooking. I hate chopping vegetables or whatever, um, but we have to chop a couple onions. For this meat sauce, I really like lots of onions. So if I had big onions, I might just use one, but these are relatively small, so I'm gonna do two onions. And um, don't judge my knife and my cutting techniques because I don't know the right way to do it. Um, I know that like on one of those cooking shows, that Ann Burrell lady, that scary lady, uh, she says not to cut off the furry part or whatever, but that doesn't make any sense to me. I just cut it off. Cutting off the hairy part. I know I'm not supposed to, but I'm doing it anyway. What a rebel. I know. I didn't go to culinary school, but I have watched a lot of worse cooks. Anne carries that red pen. I'd be, I'd look bloody if she were here. Okay. Why have you watched so much Food Network? Well, I've been home for a long time, even before the coronavirus. I've been home recovering from, oh, I cut off too much of it. Anyway, recovering from major surgery and liver transplant in August of last year. So I've been home for a long time and I'm doing really well, but it takes a long time to recover. So in the meantime, I've kind of taken up cooking and cooked for the family. I'm gonna start cutting up these onions. Hopefully I don't start crying here. I do know you're supposed to do this so you don't cut your finger off, but I don't know. They're not too bad, but then you get down to here, and I don't know what to do, so then I just start. So since you've been home with this liver transplant, what do you do when you're not cooking or watching Food Network? Oh, <laughs> oh no. Now he's crying. Oh my word. The first one I was okay. Well, I mentioned I didn't go to culinary school um, because I really went to a conservatory of music. I'm a musician. Most of you watching this probably know that, but yes, I studied voice, opera, choral conducting. I went to the University of Cincinnati Conservatory of Music. That's where I met my wife. Oh, I hate this part, I hate it. I could use my food processor. I forgot about that. I got a food processor for Christmas, but I kind of forget about it. Because it's not sitting out. See, now what am I supposed to do here? This is where I just start chopping. So I have a cast iron skillet over here on the, on the stove. And we have an electric stove, that's what we have. I'm gonna get some heat on that. I'm gonna put my onions in, get them um, sauteing a little bit. Then I'm gonna add the hamburger, and then we'll chop up some garlic to add, so all of this is yet to come. But I'm gonna go add this onion in. So we can start sauteing. Now you'll see my hamburger here. It's been thawing all day. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the hamburger in. We can start cooking with the onions. Once it all cooks down and the hamburger is not pink anymore, we'll drain it and then I'll add the garlic in. So I'm gonna cut the garlic right now. I buy pre, or peeled, already peeled garlic. I tried to peel it myself several times. Oh, Kelly, you got 100% biology. Wow. Your gray just came out. My hands are so slimy, I can't <laughs> open it. 
Oh, here we go. If it's already in that peel, it's it's just, it's a mess and I can't stand it. So this is so great. You can get this at Aldi. I don't know how much it costs. It doesn't matter. It's worth every penny. I love garlic. So I use about, I don't know, five or six cloves in my, in my sauce. That's more than six, but some of them are bigger than the others. And I, and I hate cutting it, but so I just, you know, I just start cutting it. Okay, so the garlic is ready to go in. I'm gonna check on the hamburger. I hear some sizzling. Yes. Oh, I think you're still hearing the... The squash. The squash, this is still heating up. This is my favorite thing in the world, cast iron skill. I never had one before Christmas. Um, and it's awesome because I won't be doing it with this meal, but often I cook things here and then I can put them directly in the oven to finish. Um, and that's really handy. And this thing heats really fast. So we're gonna let this cook. It's gonna take a little bit of time. But we'll be back, we'll be draining it all and then adding the garlic and then um, moving forward with the sauce. All right, we've got um, about 11 minutes left for a squash. I'm just gonna check on it. For heaven's sake. <laughs> fire, the fire, the smoke detector is gonna go off. The smoke detector. <sighs> okay. I'm gonna turn on the fan. Yeah. Our hamburger onion mixture is almost ready to drain. Still a little bit of pink in there, a little bit ways to go. I don't know why the oven is smoking. Make sure there's no fire. I don't want to look too far because if you're looking, you're not cooking. Learn that on the food network. So anyway, we got 10 more minutes to go. We'll get those out, get that spaghetti going, get it cooled off, drain this uh, meat here in a minute. We'll be ready to go. All right. So as you can see, our hamburger um, no longer has any pink. So I've got my big mitts on and we're going to um, drain the hamburger and onions. I never pour bacon grease down my sink, but I do allow this grease to go down. I hope it's okay. I'm sure someone will tell me if it's not. But I do wash it down with some hot water. Okay. going back to the stove and we're going to add in the garlic and some people might put the garlic with the onions I don't know I just don't want it to lose any when I rinse it out Got the garlic there and then this is where I cheat I'm going to use marinara sauce that's already made now you can make your own um, but this already is kind of have a lot of steps, so I'm using, and I did open it. Callie was wondering if I was going to be able to open it. Um, already prepared marinara sauce. This is straight from Aldi. Highest quality, but we love it. It has some carbs in it. It does, but it's not too bad. Again, we're not tyrants about the low carbs. We just, you know, watch it as best as possible. I use a little water to rinse it out. I'm going to get every little bit out. this up. Oh, it's looking good. Now sometimes I make my own with like tomato sauce and tomato paste and crushed tomatoes and that's good. But tonight I'm kind of in a hurry. So we're just going to use the prepared marinara with the meat and the garlic and the onions. And then I have my secret recipe, my secret thing. And that is, I like a sweet marinara sauce. Regular marinara sauce um, is too acidy for me. So I like to put a little bit of sweetener in it. I, you can put sugar if, if you want the carbs, but I use Splenda. Uh, you can use whatever uh, sweetener you like. Um, I prefer Splenda. And I'm just gonna put, I don't know, just like a, a spoonful 
Maybe a little more. I like it sweet. Maybe a little more. Yes. So again, for me, that counters the acidity. I sound so smart. Now I'm just gonna turn it down, put the lid on it, and let it just kind of simmer here for a while. Get all those flavors in there. Little oh, birds. We had to open our door because it's so smoky in here. I don't know why. This happens when I make bacon in the oven too. I, the fire alarms go off and the smoke detectors in me. Okay. The sauce is pretty much done. We're just gonna let it let it simmer. We have three minutes until the squash come out of the oven, and then that'll be fun. All right, timer's going off. Time to get the spaghetti squash out of the oven. This is so exciting. Look, I made a mess. Oh! Woo! Look at that! So, this is what they look like. We're gonna let them cool for a minute. Uh, so that I can handle them and then we're gonna bring them over here to the island and get the spaghetti out of it And see how that goes All right They've been out of the, out of the oven just a few minutes, but I'm too impatient to wait so I'm bringing them over here Ooh, Look at that And flipping them out onto my cutting board the next step is to take a fork and just I don't know, this still might be too hot, let me see. You just take a fork and you just kind of scrape spaghetti squash and it comes out looking like spaghetti. Now, oh, it is hot. Um, the fir first couple of times <laughs> I made it, the uh, lasagna was kind of watery. So what I think I'm gonna try to do, and I don't know, Callie's worried that it's gonna stick. But I think I'm gonna try to get the spaghetti out and put it on some paper towels and kind of absorb some of the moisture before we put it into, <gasps> The casserole dish, um, I don't know. I may have to wait a few more minutes for this because it is really hot. Okay, it's cooled down a little bit and I have a better idea, I think, rather than the, uh, the paper towels. I'm gonna put... Wait, where did you get this idea? Oh, it was mine. Oh. <laughs> it was Joy, my wife. It's it a brilliant idea. I'm gonna put the spaghetti squash in the colander and then I'm gonna take the colander over to the sink and then I'm gonna press down with a spoon and kind of press the spaghetti squash in there to get out the moisture and that way I don't have to worry about it sticking to the paper towels. So I'm still working here. Oh, it's still kind of hot. I just did this. Oh, Dad, we're trying to say hygiene from, you know, COVID-19 well, and you're licking your fingers. it's just our family that's eating here. I really highly recommend that you let this cool, but I'm kind of in a time crunch. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to let it cool, I'm sorry. We'll check back. All right, I'm finishing up scraping out this, this spaghetti squash from the shell here. And look, this one came out really easily. Some are easier than others. Um, this one came out. Look, look how nice that came out. And it's it's still kind of hot, but it's okay. It would be easier if I could touch it with my fingers. But look how look how much look how that worked. Beautiful, beautiful. I do have a mess here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this um, colander to the sink and squeeze out the moisture get out like i said when i made this before it was a little watery it's because i didn't i didn't get any of the moisture out of the squash and we have the sauce going in so we don't need this extra moisture i don't like watery lasagna this has to be helping right i don't know it still looks pretty moist do you like that word moist? Some people don't like the word moist. I think it's the most, most disliked word in the English language, moist. 
So this spaghetti squash is mixed. Okay, I think I've more I cannot do here. Um, it's about ready to, we're about ready to start layering our lasagna and this is exciting. You don't wanna miss it. All right, so we're about to assemble our lasagna. First of all, you wanna spray or grease or whatever you do to a nine by 13 pan. I have to make sure I get every spot. And then I'm gonna use all of the spaghetti squash. I didn't think I would need it all, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna use it, why not? So you spread out your spaghetti squash and all the, the olive oil and the seasoning, it smells really good. Can't you smell it, Kelly? Yes, and I'm sure the people watching can smell it too. Because they have smell a vision <laughs> Now I have the oven preheated to 350 degrees, just so you know. Our ricotta cheese that we made earlier. Did we put all of it on right now? Yes! Along with all of the squash? Yeah. We're going all in. Go big or go home. And the great thing about these recipes is you don't have to cook every night because like you could eat on this for two or three days. It's the way we roll. Dinner with that. So you spread your ricotta mixture out evenly. My son's gonna be so mad because he doesn't like the ricotta cheese and he wants me to put a third of it with no ricotta, but then like it would be like a big drop off. And I'm not doing that. Okay, are you bored to death yet? You have to be. If you're still watching this, God bless you. So this is about my best job here. Now we're moving over to add the sauce. The sauce is bubbly, it smells, mm, I wish you could smell it. Again, I wish you had smell-o-vision. We're just gonna dump it in here. And then, of course I can take these off now. Sometimes I just leave them on for hours. Then you just spread this all out. Look at that. Yummy goodness. A nice, sweet meat sauce. Then we're going to top it with as much mozzarella cheese as you would like. I like lots of cheese. I got the cheese, spread it out. I probably used, I don't know, a couple cups, I think. And then I always like to put just a little bit of garlic powder, just a little bit on top of the cheese. You do love garlic. I do. And when it comes out, we'll put um, some parsley. I don't have any fresh parsley, but I have some dried parsley. We'll put that on top when it comes out. So I have to cover it. Oh, who did this? I just been playing in the foil, but <laughs> for heaven's sake, I think I'm just gonna have enough. Or not, I don't know. Cover it with foil. So it's loosely covered here. And then we're gonna stick it in the oven, 350 degrees, for 20 minutes. Oh, it is heavy! Wow, okay. 20 minutes with the foil on, then we're gonna take the foil off, and then 20 more minutes with the foil off. It's gonna be awesome. All right, 20 minutes is up. So we gotta take it out and remove the foil. Mmm, it smells so good. I'm hoping that the cheese doesn't stick. Oh, not bad, not bad. Ooh, look at that string. Ooh. Ah. I'll be eating that later, okay. Now we're gonna put it back in. Oh, I hope it's, oh, it's a little. Look at that. Oh no. Wait, do it again. It's wiggly. Oh, it's wiggly and it's um, looking moist. It does look moist. Oh, it's scary. I don't know. Well, we'll see. 20 more minutes. See you then. All right, the timer's going off again. That means it should be done. Look at that. Look at that. 
still looks a little wiggly. We're gonna put on some fresh parsley, not fresh, this is dried parsley. Mostly for aesthetics. But who doesn't love a little parsley? And I think we're gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes before we cut into it, so it can uh, kind of hopefully not be runny. We'll be back. All right, it's time to cut in to the spaghetti squash lasagna. We've let it sit here for a few minutes, kind of settle. Look at that. I'm really hoping it's not too watery, but who knows? Maybe you'll be surprised. This is the perfect kind of lowish carb meal with a nice salad. Let's see how this, this is the test right here. I have a good feeling about this, Callie. Alrighty. Look at that, oh, look at that. And not watery. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. I'm so happy. Well, we're gonna chow down and have some dinner. All right, everyone, it's time to give it a try. What do we think? That's really good. It's good. Success? I love it. I actually so love it. Maybe even more than, than real lasagna with noodles. It's wow. really good. I know, I've had, it, I've had it before. I don't base that on just this one bite, but from previous times with this. I love it. Thumbs Great. up. Awesome. Well, thanks for watching. And Dinner's maybe we'll make some more episodes. And uh, you can get the recipe in the comments below. I love that this was Dinners with Dad and not Dinners with Mom. That is great. <laughs> Yay. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. See you. Bye.